All right, well, it's good to be back at work. Um, you know, with the players being able to practice and um, being able to play, obviously we wanted to keep playing. Um, you know, the A&M game, you know, but had the same issues they had earlier where they canceled. So it is what it is. Um, chance to finish the season with a winning record in SEC, all SEC games, um, which, which would be pretty exciting for our first year to do, especially, you know, knowing that we let a couple of them slip away that we should have won. So. Big challenge, extremely talented team as always, you know, and you know, even though it won't be full, you're still going into Baton Rouge, which is not an easy place to play ever. And they're coming off a great win, and uh, you know, where I don't think many people gave them a chance, so a uh, huge challenge for us. David starts off. Elaine, I, I can't help but I got to ask you about the message on your shirt. Uh, can, what can you say about that? Um, you know, it's Christmas time, you know, just, you know, and uh, my favorite holiday of the year, I guess. And, you know, so just um, someone gave me a shirt and Merry Christmas. They spelled it wrong. So, you know, it was free. Hey, in, in all seriousness, seriousness, though, uh, the success on the field, how much is that? Do you uh, attribute that to the meteoric rise of the recruiting rankings and stuff like that over the last couple of weeks? A lot. Um, anytime you're playing, you know, especially your first year, and these kids can't official visit. You know, I think that, you know, there was probably a lot of concern out there. This was going to be a disaster class because we don't know the kids and we can't get them here. And one of the best things about here is to come on official visits for game day and see the town, see the university, see the stadium. And so they weren't able to do that. So I think the performance on the field, you know, with all the national games, has gone a long ways because, you know, the last few weeks have been awesome and great responses from kids. I think not just the success on the field, but, you know, they talk about seeing the energy on the sidelines, the players having fun. Um, you know, they mention a lot the difference between, you know, the two state programs, in-state programs. So um, it's been great. You know, last year when you got here, it was kind of, you know, everything was hurried and frenzied leading up to the early signing period. What does your war room look like this Wednesday? What how, how is your setup? How are you guys going to do this Wednesday? Well, like we said, we saved some spots, which we used in, you know, um, I think three transfers, you know, post signing day. Um, and then still have a few spots. So this class will be a lot better, you know, like we said it would be, even though with the COVID issues. And um, just proud of our assistant coaches. It hasn't been easy. Um, I think that not having a game last week really helped us a lot. We spend a ton of time on Zooms and basically doing home visits with kids on a screen. So <clears throat> it's been really neat, and uh, we're not done yet. So I think you're going to see some more exciting things in the next 48 hours. Thank you, Lane. Yep. Go to Nick. Lane, just getting the team back on Friday and Saturday, how does everybody look after having to take that pause? And do you guys feel like you will be prepared to play a game on Saturday? I do. I don't think it's ideal. Um, but. You know, we definitely have fresh legs. That, that part's good, but um, it's taking a little bit of time getting back into it. And we don't have everybody yet. Um, you know, because of those COVID guys, you know, they're trickling back in. Um, some got back today, some back tomorrow. So uh, that's a whole nother challenge. And some, some are very significant players. Is there any chance that guys won't be back or are you expecting the full roster to be back? Uh, we expect them to be back. Their, uh, their days will be up, so uh, they should be back as long as they pass their final test once they come out. Go to Yancey. Coach, speaking of Zoom meetings, did you have a good Zoom meeting last night? Uh, as far as? <laughs> there was a, without without naming the prospect, there was supposed to have been a Zoom meeting with y'all and a major prospect last night. Oh. It was kind of a joke. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. Um, yeah, we've been doing that every night, so. Um, I had a couple of them last night, so <clears throat> I obviously can't talk specifically, but really like the direction that things are going. That was your follow-up question. Um, is is there one position it seems like middle linebacker is still kind of the spot you're trying to close in on, on before Wednesday? Uh, we want to take the best available players, um, especially when we're early on, you know, as we're continuing to try to build a program. I think later on after years, um, then you get more specific like that. but. Um, yeah, we would we would love to add you know an impact middle linebacker for sure. 
you said you were going to save three spots earlier or you saved three from last class. Is there any number you have in mind that you want to save for the portal for, for this year? There's not a lot of that. You know, this is difficult. You know, like I've told our guys, it's kind of like being in the NFL. Like, you know, if we got really good players that want to come, you know, do we save really for free agency, you know, and, and you know, or do we cap out and take really good players? So, and, and we obviously still don't know a few guys, you know, we won't know till Wednesday for sure. So, um, it's not an exact number at all. We could get all these guys who want to be capped out. Um, or, you know, if we don't, we're not going to reach, and then we can go get, um, you know, some free agents. Thank you. Go to Parrish. Lane, did you have uh, conversations with uh, with Ed uh, before taking the Ole Miss job about the Ole Miss job? Uh, I don't think I did. Um, I'd talked to him, you know, years ago about it and stuff, and obviously had him on staff twice since then between USC and. Um, Tennessee, but no, I, I did not this time. Uh, what can one big win like they experienced at Florida do for a team that uh, that had been struggling? Well, it changed everything. I mean, you could see post game their energy, and um, you know they played extremely hard in the game. Now the game could have went either way a hundred times. I mean, you know, don't throw a shoe, and probably talking about a totally different deal. So, um, you know, I, I think that re-energized them. You know, I think that it's been a lot harder, obviously, losing that game. Now go go back and whatever losing streak that would be, they'd be on. But, um, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure that gave a bunch of energy and wanted to finish strong. Go to David. <clears throat> Lane, the expectations are for Ole Miss to go to a bowl game for the first time in five years. If that happens, uh, you know, what does that mean? Uh, for the program in terms of extra practices, and particularly for the younger guys, things like that, how will you use that time? Well, <clears throat> I hope it's not it, when it, or if it happens, like you said. I'm, I'm assuming it's when it happens. So um, we're excited about that. Um, it helps for the development of all your players. Um, fan energy would be great to play in a great bowl game. You know, actually, some of our mid years that'll be January guys can actually come practice for a few days with us. So that'll be pretty neat, too. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Lane, I was wondering if you could expound a little bit on your relationship with Ed. You guys go way back, have been at different places together. And before you got the FAU job, there was a lot of talk about you joining him in Baton Rouge. Just how did that relationship come about? And how is it that, you know, you, you guys are kind of different people. How, how do you get along so well? Um, <clears throat> I would have been, I think, 24 um, when Pete Carroll hired me. Ed Ogeron was carried over from the previous staff. And, um, I was just a young coach. He was recruiting coordinator. He had obviously been a great recruiter, and so really learned a lot from him. Just watched how he worked, and you know how I'd go do visits with him. We'd go in home visits and um, in schools together. So I learned a lot from him in recruiting. Um, then was able to, you know, when he got Tennessee to talk him out of or talk him out of leaving New Orleans, which <clears throat> you know he was he was in Louisiana. He was happy and at the Saints, and we able to talk him into coming there, and um, and then. You know, the USC thing, he was there before me. So <laughs> he, he said when USC offered a job, he said, I'm on a plane, in, plane to LA, I'll meet you there. <laughs> so he got there a day before I got there. <laughs> he was so excited to go back to SC. And um, so obviously unbelievable job last year and great recruiter and great motivator. And I, I know that on another note with LSU, that Stingley, is, his status is kind of up in the air. But if he's out there and if he's healthy, what sort of a challenge does he present to you guys um, offensively? Yeah, you know, really good cover uh, player. Um, I would think he's playing because I thought it looked like on the TV copy he was in pads and stuff. So he must have, in order to travel and put him in pads, he must have been close to playing, you know, or else, you know, I don't think that would have happened. So um, I would certainly think that he's going to play. Back to David. Lane, you mentioned last week you were concerned a little bit about the layoff and the focus of your team and everything. Is there anything extra or special you do this week uh, to kind of gather that focus back in for this final regular season game? Yeah, just talked to them a lot, um, you know, this morning about the importance of the game. You know, <clears throat> you're remember the rest of your life. You go into Tiger Stadium, beat LSU, and you know, nobody's going to remember it was COVID or opt-outs or any of that stuff. Um, you know, so pretty neat. None of these guys ha have done that. So, if it, you know, this is a, 
it's a huge game and really important too besides it just being LSU to I think you know all you guys would have said pretty successful season if after seeing that SEC schedule roll out that you're gonna have a winning record so that'd be awesome back to Nick Lane kind of got to ask about some of the rumors that'll circulate about Auburn wanting to reach out to you for that vacancy. Have they reached out? And do you pay attention when your name comes up as a sitting Power Five head coach for other jobs like that? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, that's just product of when your players play well, you're going to be in rumors like that. So there's been no conversations, anything like that. Um, I wanted to say, um, you know, what I learned from my mentor, um, you know, that. If you guys are going to keep asking this, I'm going to have to tell you, I will not be the head coach at Alabama, okay? So stop asking me. I wasn't supposed to say that, but I just had to.